everybody, welcome to this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to talk about an often used, but I think often underused feature of Photoshop, and that is the almighty and all powerful levels adjustment. You can apply it as just a straight adjustment to your layer, or of course, preferably, you apply it as an adjustment layer here, layer, new adjustment layer, levels. We're going to talk about how to use that in Photoshop and some of the hidden powers of the Levels feature. Now, before we get going, I just want to remind you our sponsor for this month, GraphicStock.com. You can go over there this month only, April of 2016. Sign up, 39 bucks. You get six months of access, over 300,000 images and stock uh, vectors, illustrations, graphics you can download. It's all royalty-free stuff, great stuff. There's a link down in the description to this video. You can go check it out. And hey, look, the photo we're using in this tutorial today we got from GraphicStock.com. With all that in mind, let's talk about levels. So we're going to apply a levels adjustment layer here, but actually before we do, um, under image adjustments, this levels dialog box is a little bit different than the levels dialog box you get for your adjustment layer, mainly because you have this options feature and also you can auto level correct. Uh, you have some different presets, which honestly, I in, in the years and years and years that I've used Photoshop, I've never used a single one of these presets even once. Um, so it's just not my thing. I don't really use them. You can load and save your presets, yada, yada, yada. Uh, all this stuff in the middle we'll talk about with the adjustment layer. It's all the same. Uh, eyedropper is the same thing. You can just hit auto to auto correct the um the contrast auto is it ever really a good idea probably not so i don't usually do that hold down the alter option key and the cancel button switches to reset and you can just reset your curves to what they were the options here these are the auto color correction options you can basically pick the way that photoshop will auto color and tone and contrast correct your image by finding light and dark image uh by finding light and dark colors right so if we tell photoshop hey that's actually my shadow uh, I can hit OK, and like up here, this is actually a highlight. OK, and my midtone is actually like here, or what? I don't know, whatever. Um, and it'll use that stuff and mix it up. And you can find more information on any of the boring Photoshop classroom books uh, that you like. The, the gist and the moral of the story is don't use auto. Learn how to really use levels, and it'll be great for you. And you can save a preset and just drop that onto your images later on when you've created something yourself and you actually know what the levels are doing to your photo. It just it empowers you so much more, and you'll know exactly how to adjust images when you open up one of your images from the get-go. So I'm going to hit OK here, and we're going to use the adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer, levels. I can give it a name. I'm just going to keep it as Levels 1. And then here's my Levels dialog box. So we've got a few things to look at here. Number one, most people know, you drag the dark handle in, it's going to increase or intensify the dark, shadowy areas of your image. If you drag the light uh, color stop in, it's going to do that for the bright parts of your image, which effectively, as you can see, increases the contrast quite drastically in your image. Um, I'm going to just drag that stuff back out because I don't want that uh, going on. What we can also do is drag the midtone point. Now, if you drag the midtone point toward the dark slider, we're opening up the brighter parts of the image more. Therefore, it's going to make the image appear brighter. The image will lose some contrast, but the image will appear brighter. The same can be said for dragging toward uh, the white slider. It's going to open up the darker parts of the image. And you can see it makes the image, well, you guessed it, darker. I'm going to set this back to 1.00, which is the default. We also have our output levels. Now, output levels are very useful um, and really, really interesting because a lot of people think of curves as uh, a feature that you're going to use when you want to increase contrast. But what about when you want to decrease contrast? And there are times when you'd want to do that. You can drag the black slider over and it pumps light into just the shadowy parts of the image. And if you drag the white part over, it takes the white parts of your image and just really dulls them down. So you can see in our image behind the levels dialog here, we've really killed the contrast in this image. But what if we do that and then we set this adjustment layer to something like overlay, which will inherently increase contrast all over again? Well, we get an image that has increased contrast. Now, does it really make a difference? Yeah, it kind of does. You can see that we've actually controlled the, the, the amount of contrast quite a bit. So we can just maybe move that way over and we can close up some of the highlights some, all right, kind of like that. Uh, maybe make the brights a little bit brighter. Maybe just give a kick just into the shadows a teensy, teensy bit. I want to be careful I don't make him too dark. And then we could close our properties window here and you can see there's before there's after we've made a levels adjustment it's brighten the image it's increase the contrast a bit that's pretty cool i'm going to add another layers uh, i'm sorry another levels adjustment layer here up here in my adjustments panel that's the levels icon there 
One of the things that I want to do is just maybe try to kill off some of the blue haze of the image. We can also do color corrections with the levels uh, adjustment. We have three eyedroppers here. These are sort of the auto color correctors. You can use the black dropper. This is setting a black point. So like if I click here and say this point should be black, you're going to see it's going to really darken the image quite a bit. But it also shifted the color because this area that had a lot of blue in it, well, it forced it to be black, which is devoid of color. I mean, it's not, it's like all the colors pumped into one, I know, but there's not like a green or a yellow or a red color cast uh, down in there. It is true blue black, no pun intended. I'm going to undo that. I also have the white eyedropper, which if I select anywhere out here, will make that area very bright white. And you can see it brightens everything up quite a bit. If I select a darker part of the image and make that white, you can see we blow out tons of the image and everything now kind of has this cyan green yellow color cast. It's pretty uh, pretty horrific. Let's undo a couple times to get ourselves out of that. Then we have our neutrals. So the neutral eyedropper doesn't really brighten or darken much of anything. I mean, it, it will affect it a very little bit, but mainly because of color. We can select something that we know should have no color in it, and it will white balance in theory it will correct the white balance of the entire image. So we could say, hey, that really is supposed to be white or something that doesn't have a bunch of color. Now, I know to us now it looks like there's a lot of yellow, but that's because yellow is the opposite of blue. And when we're staring at an image that has a lot of blue, your eye automatically is trying to color correct and artificially infusing the image with a lot of yellow. It's actually true. It's kind of a, it's a bizarre phenomenon. Um, so when we actually color correct this, it's going to look like everything got really, really yellow. But if we close our eyes and we look away and we don't pay attention for a couple minutes, and we come back to our computer, it's going to look normal. And then when we shut off that color correcting level, then everything's going to look really blue. Now, obviously, in this case, the blue kind of works because it's supposed to look cold and like a frozen tundra. I'm going to get rid of that levels adjustment layer. We're going to create a new levels adjustment, and we're going to talk about the color channels. All right, so of course, you have your auto color correct stuff. But what happens if you want to control exactly how much color correction or uh, color artistic styling you're going to put on a photo? You can use your color um, channels. Now, red, the opposite. Opposite of red, and if I drag the black slider here, you're going to see the opposite of red is cyan. You see how we just dumped a bunch of cyan into the image? If we drag the white slider, you drag a bunch of red into the image. All right, that's pretty cool. So the same thing, if we drag away from the black, it's going to you know, dump a bunch of cyan into the image. If we drag away from the white, it's going to dump a bunch of red into the image. And the same thing for the output sliders. If we drag the black slider, it's going to pour a bunch of red into the shadows. All right. If we drag the white slider, it's going to pour a bunch of cyan into the highlights because red and cyan, cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, blue, right? CMYK, RGB. So they're, they're opposite. They oppose each other, those colors. The opposite of green, well, CM, M is for magenta, RG, G, green. Magenta and green should be opposites. So this means when I drag the white slider, it should be green. Well, that's pretty green. But if I drag the black slider, it should be magenta. And you can see, yes, magenta. So that's pretty cool. You can introduce green into the shadows. You can introduce magenta into the highlights here. Um, you can introduce more green into the midtones or more magenta into the midtones. And this is maybe an area where, you know, throwing a little bit more magenta in there is stylistically what you want to do. We can go down to the blue. And the opposite of blue is CMY. CMY. Y stands for yellow. RGB for blue. The opposite of blue is, you guessed it, we drag the black slider, you're going to see it's yellow. So we drag the white slider, and that gives us a bunch of blue. Let's just look here. Maybe if we introduce some yellow, it'll actually look kind of cool. Um, now, I don't like the way the yellow is coloring him, and he really needs to be brightened up. We would probably need to mask an adjustment layer to that, or to him, or her, depending on uh, who it is. But you can see, with levels, not only can you adjust the, the tonality of the image in terms of, um, you know, brightness and darkness and contrast, but you can also change the overall coloring of the photo by using these color channels. Let me just give you another example here uh, in this photo. Let's get rid of the levels adjustment layer we just created. And I know we're kind of spending some time on this, but there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this. Uh, let's go over to channels and let's go to the blue channel. Um, now the blue channel, if we shut off green and red, the blue channel is very, very bright and it, it is composed of, I'm going to close my properties here, it's composed of a lot of these areas out here on the mountains that are very blue. I'm going to duplicate, um, actually I don't need to duplicate it, I'm just going to command click that channel. It's going to load the blue channel as a selection. I'm going to turn on my RGB composite channel, I'm going to select my RGB composite channel, go back to my layers, and I'm going to add another levels adjustment layer. It's going to use my selection, i.e. the blue channel, as a mask. You can see the mask that's been created. What I can do here is I can either increase the brightness or darkness of these blues in my photo, and I can go to the blue color channel, and I can increase or decrease the blue parts of the photo just like that. 
All right. So in this case, maybe I'm going to go the opposite way than I initially intended and really just enhance the blues um, and maybe increase the contrast of those blues quite a bit to try to cut down on some of that sort of like, I don't know, false foggy haze, whatever it is up there at the top of the mountain. And you can see before we add that layers adjustment and after we add that layers adjustment, we do quite a bit of change. And if I hold down my shift key and select the layer mask to, to disable the layer mask, you can see that the layer mask is doing us a lot of good because it's really working on those blue pixels and not messing with our little skier dude here. So. That's probably where I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this one up. The levels adjustment, there is just so much you can do with it. It's really, really powerful. And we didn't really even get into, you know, mixing up some blend modes and reducing the opacity a little bit to maybe mix and combine effects. Um, but that's it for now, for this one, for the levels adjustment in Photoshop. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.